You're watching Backyard Tech. Coming up this week, Frank Orman refused entry into Lawyer X Royal Commission, a childcare centre deemed dangerous to life, the ridiculous reasons why Victorians are ringing the ambulance, a Melbourne City Council goes too far, and Old Mate's opinion on Nick Kyrgios. This is the weekly wrap-up, the other news stuff from Backyard Tech. G'day everyone, thank you for tuning in, welcome to this week's edition of the Weekly Wrap Up and four stories that caught my eye this week, plus the Nick Kyrgios disgusting incident that I want to put my opinion to. I don't know what Tennis Australia are going to do about him, he's a disgrace, not just to tennis here in Australia, but to sport generally speaking, we'll get to that later on. Let's get into it, and um, the first Lawyer X acquittal, Frank Omar Orman has been refused entry into the Lawyer X Royal Commission. And something's a bit sus here because things are starting to come out and I think Victoria Police are starting to get a little bit panicky about it. Um, the first person acquitted because of Victoria's, Victoria's Lawyer X scandal has been denied the opportunity to hear about the evidence that led to his wrongful murder conviction. Frank Orman was released last month after spending 12 years in prison due to a miscarriage of justice caused by his lawyer, Nicola Gobbo. Gobbo's double dealings with as a Victoria Police informer. But he's been refused the chance to hear senior police discuss the evidence that put him behind bars over fears the identities of informers and their handlers could be exposed, putting them at risk. Um, th this is getting really ugly because something's rotten at Vic Pole. Something's really rotten. Here's a crim who's now been acquitted, okay, because of a miscarriage of justice, dealing with a, a, a double agent, basically, right? He's been acquitted. Now he's not allowed into the Royal Commission because Vic Pol are worried he could arc up. Now, we can't say too much more because there are rumours flying around he's going to lodge a wrongful uh, conviction case against Victoria Police, and sue him. Um, Mr. Ryan approved. Uh, the commission also heard Detective uh, Stuart Bateson receive two bowls of wine as a wedding gift from the witness who passed it, who was who passed on by Ms. Gobbo. Um, this is getting ugly, and Vic Pole are doing their level best to stall the Royal Commission. But clearly something is rotten at Force Command. Not with the well, not with your frontline coppers, but with everyone further up the chain. Um, I'm going to go out on a limb here and say he wanted to go in and listen to it to strengthen his case against Victoria Police. That's the way I read it. So that one's getting ugly. This is horrifying, and this just shows you how bad the Victorian government is handling this combustible cladding issue. Um, Melbourne Child Care Centre deemed, quote-unquote, danger to life as investigation uncovers combustible cladding. This is a child care centre. A child care centre in Melbourne's southeast deemed to be a danger to life is one of the number of public buildings found by inspectors to be wrapped in combustible cladding. A nine news investigation has uncovered these buildings, which also include hotels and hospitals uh, through documents obtained uh, through FOI. The child care centre located in Hughesdale, Melbourne's southeastern suburbs, was inspected in October last year. The letter from Monash City Council to the property owner said that the inspection revealed, uh, the inspection quote revealed concerns that there, that there is a danger to life, safety or health of any number of the public or person using the building due to the installation of combustible cladding, expanded polystyrene cladding or lining to external walls. The owners were issued with a building notice and given 60 days to respond, but 10 months on, the Victorian Building Authority confirmed no rectification work had been carried out. So the VBA hasn't done their job either here. As parents dropped off their children at a daycare centre, Nine News asked if they knew about the cladding problem and they all said they'd not been told. One father, Adrian, said it was worrying, quote, especially after hearing about other apartment towers and fires that, have, that, that went on. Planning Minister Richard Wynne said the childcare centre was being dealt with appropriately. The only problem is it's not. 
the VBA has taken over responsibility from Mono City Council for this particular site and I think that speaks to the importance of there being a coordinated effort to deal with the cladding, not just at this site. Um, the VBA, look, I'll be honest, uh, Quest Apartments is in trouble. Uh, Mulgrave Valley Private Hospital as well. Um, the government's not saying what buildings, but I guarantee you they're shoving it over to the VBA because they don't want to deal with it. They don't, they don't want the public backlash against the government. They'd rather against uh, an in, a, a bureaucratic body, basically, like the VBA. The VBA dropped the ball on this one. They admitted that in the media. They dropped the ball on this. And um, it's not a good look for the VBA. And aside from that, Richard Wynne, the planning minister, should be on the VBA's case, clobbering about this one. But no, he's tiptoeing around the issue. Um... Tim Smith said, if I was the Minister for Planning, I would be horrified that children are going to a very dangerous building that my department has known about for a long time and done nothing to fix it. Um, you know, the, the, this is the, 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 this combustible cladding problem, it's not just affecting Australia either. We've got the Grenfell Tower disaster over there in London. Um... It's right around the world. And the problem is, it's cheap, cladding crap. How do you get something finished quick? How do you get something finished cheap? You spend stuff all. Get it done, get out of it, move on to the next one. If it packs up, walk away and wash your hands of it. The VBA is in a world of hurt here, and so should the government. Because the bureaucratic body in the VBA has done nothing about this until panic set in. And now they're trying to sort out what essentially is a massive mess. This is beyond a joke now. Okay. Now, I think this is just pandering to mon minority groups here. This is simply pandering to minority groups. Moreland City Council in Melbourne is would like to say they're a progressive council, but they're a pandering council. And to hear about this is just utterly infuriating to me. They're just pandering to minorities here. This is from my beloved 3AW. This is just, quote, this is just ridiculous. It's pathetic. Councillor slams Moreland City Council after meat ban. And in a Melbourne Greens led, yes, it is Greens led, council has voted to stop serving meat at events held on Mondays. Moreland City Council made the decision at a meeting last night, late last night. Now, this is from uh, the 16th. Meat dishes will be banned at all council events held on Monday, including meals during councillor briefings. Councillor Oscar Yildiz who voted against the meat ban said it's quote unquote pathetic. This is just ridiculous, he told 3AW's Ross and John. We finish work at 5.30 p.m. We get to council. It's not exactly an a la carte sort of dinner. We don't get silver service. There's no grog. You're lucky to get four choices. What they are soon going to force us to do is to wear certain clothes made in certain countries. The council declared a climate emergency earlier this year, but Councillor Yildiz said they, are, they should focus on local issues. We've got bigger problems to focus on, like the recycling. This is just them chipping away gradually at things, and this is what they do. They are going to get rid of parking down Sydney Road. They'll just do a trial and then say, you know what, we surveyed three people and 95% of them said yes, so let's get rid of parking on Sydney Road. The Moreland City Council should be sacked. They do this sort of thing. They pander to the minority groups within the Moreland City Council area. Now, my US viewers, um, to put you guys in the line, these are to my dear US viewers, my good friends over there. Um, we don't have counties here in Victoria. We have suburban councils. 
each council is allotted so many suburbs, all right? Um, unlike you guys who have various neighborhoods, we don't, okay? So the Moreland City Council takes in, I think about eight or nine suburbs. I can't actually remember properly. But they pander to the minority groups, especially the Greens and the minority ethnics. They're more worried about them than some of the more pressing local issues facing Moreland City Council area and the suburbs within it. Um, you know, a meat ban. And they do. They only so survey the minority group and then say that 95% said yes. It's well known that's what Moreland do. I don't want to get into a slanging match over religious um, stuff, but the majority of people who live in Moreland are not ethnic groups. They're Australians. So it's a Greens-led council they're one of about three or four councils in Melbourne that have declared a climate emergency. I'm sorry, that is just inane. So that one, that one blew me out of the water, I've got to tell you. That one really blew me out of the water this week. Okay, now this is just stupid as well. And I think everyone can relate to in some way, shape, or form, the ambulance service around the world. Ambulance Victoria, the front line, so the ambos, the paramedics, the microparamedics, etc. Some of the reasons, they, a lot of people ring the ambo, they can't be stuffed going to their GP, so they either ring the ambo or clog up the emergency department for a cold. Ambulance Victoria has admitted that, that they, they get called out because someone's got a headache. Really? Let's get into this one. The ridiculous reasons Victorians are calling an ambulance. Victorians are calling emergency services because they can't sleep, are having bad dreams, or are sunburned. A new study examining the number of ambulance call-outs between 2008 and 2015 found emergency vehicles were being used more frequently for non-urgent situations than population growth accounted for. Executive Director of Clinical Operations for Ambulance Victoria, Mick Stevenson, said the secondary referral system helps filter out less urgent triple zero calls. They walk through a well-established internationally recognized algorithm and they determined based on Simpsons whether your illness sounds serious, he said. Um, so one other report I read was they were ringing up Ambulance Victoria, okay, because they got a paper cut. They're ringing Ambulance Victoria because they've got a mild headache. They're ringing Ambulance Victoria because they can't find a number. Now, the secondary filter system is actually working, but the algorithm isn't perfect. Far from perfect, actually. They can't sleep, are having a bad dream, or are sunburnt. You're going to ring the Ambos because you can't sleep? Ambulance Victoria is stretched to the limit. Hospital emergency departments around the state, and I can't talk for the rest of the country. I can only talk for Victoria because I see and read the reports. Ambulance Victoria is under the pump. We've got hospitals going in bypass mode or ramping mode, right? That means the ambos are held up. It doesn't matter whether you're talking a full-blown paramedic Microparamedic, intensive care ambulance, what have you. You're going to ring the ambos because you had a bad dream? You're going to ring the ambos because you can't sleep? What are you wanting? 
dose of some whopping great sleeping tablet or something. Um, sunburned. Okay. I. If you're mildly sunburned, why would you ring the ambos? It's unbelievable why they do this. I couldn't believe it. I'm sitting there reading the uh, I'm sitting there reading the other report, which is very lengthy. And I'm like, are you serious? You got a paper cut, you're in the ambos. You know, you, you, you've sprained a finger, you're in the ambos. Vic hospitals are choked. The emergency departments can't handle it. An ambulance Vic is stretched beyond limit. Inane, utterly, utterly inane. Now, um, I know a number of my viewers are not interested in sport, but old mate is. And I just want to put my two cents in on the Nick Kyrgios disgrace at the Cincinnati Masters. The temper tantrum, the spitting, the whole lot. Not only is he a disgrace to the game of tennis here in Australia, he's a disgrace to sport here in Australia. Um, I don't give a stuff if you're having a bad day. Right? He's been fined nearly 170,000 Aussie bucks. Okay? Now, I don't care if people think Kyrgios brings... You know, light entertainment to the game of tennis. He's a disgraceful person on court. His antics are shocking. He, he's got to be given a harsh ban. Now, he's not going to care. He and Tomic have got so much money between them, they probably could afford to retire now. Right? He, to me... He reminds me of John McEnroe. Now, if you're a tennis person, you'll know, well, the whole world knows John McEnroe. Okay. Nick Kyrgios reminds me of John McEnroe. And even during this year's Australian Open, John McEnroe was commentating. And he said he's never seen an Australian act so appallingly that it reminds me, reminds him of himself back in the early days. Wimbledon, the Australian Open, the US Masters, the US Open, sorry, right, at um, Flushing Meadows, the Cincinnati Masters, etc. And he's right. You don't spit at anyone in the game of tennis. You don't claim a toilet break, then walk down the half, you know, a third of the way down the hall and go and smash rackets. Utterly disgusting behaviour. Now, okay, when I played pennant tennis, if I hit a bad shot or, you know, smashed it into the net, lobbed it up and it went outside the lines, yeah, I got, I got annoyed with myself, but I didn't throw a temper tantrum, didn't do the histrionics. Now, you can say, well, you know, that's just curios. Well, yeah, fine. If he doesn't want to play tennis, why doesn't he just quit? It's not like he's short of cash. Tomic's driving around in, a, in freaking Lamborghinis. You're telling me Kyrgios hasn't got money? The antics on the court are disgusting. He's a shocker. So, that's just my two cents. I don't like him. I don't like him as a tennis player or anything. You know, I, you guys know I listen to 700 WLW over there in Cincinnati. And the news report that they had showed that even the people over there thought he was utterly disgraceful. 
you know. But he is. He's, he's like a he's like a young John McEnroe. Slightly amplified, I guess you could say. I mean, McEnroe was a great tennis player. We all remember him going off tap at Wimbledon. You can't be serious. You cannot be serious, you know. His antics, his temper tantrums, throwing the racket, code violations, the whole kit and caboodle. I just, I, 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 I love tennis, but I see a Nick Kyrgios match, I turn off. Because I know there's going to be a dummy spit or some sort of, hey, look, this is funny, or, you know, chucking the racket and all this type of stuff. I'm surprised his sponsors haven't arced up about him before, to be honest. But there we are. Weekly wrap-up done. Stick around. We'll have the final ESXi challenge coming up shortly as well. Have a good one, all. Cheers.